Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to bring you a playthrough of the first boss fight against Alpha Moby in Renegade, a game designed by Ricky Royal, also known as officially Richard Wilkins, and published by Victory Point Games. If you want to see my full intro to the game with a tutorial playthrough, I have linked that in the show notes, but this is just a straight up playthrough of um, a conflict against the easiest boss in the game, just to show a full game. So I'm all set up for a full game. I basically shuffled these server tiles and I just drew them off the stack and laid them out. I, you can actually make your, uh, your network a lot more open than this. So an open partition is one that isn't surrounded by everything. A closed partition is one that is bordered on all sides. So, you know, you can, you, there's a lot more opportunity for openness than I've shown in this particular setup, but I want everything to fit on camera. Alpha Moby doesn't have any positional uh, stuff that will penalize me for having open versus closed partitions. And uh, I wanted to just put everything around faith because a lot happens on this purple server. So that was my reasoning for making this particular setup. So in this game, uh, I'm going to be playing Ocean Noro. So I was Heady Magnetic, the, a yellow player, a yellow hacker in the last game. This time I'm going to be playing Red. So my special ability is that my avatar adds plus two to any infection scores in my partition at all times. So basically when I'm attacking Sparks or Guardians, I have a bonus to my role that is automatic just because I'm so infectious. So uh, when you play a character that is the red color, you have an access point on red number six. So here I am with my starting virus. Also, because I'm playing a pure solo game, you get a little uh, blue information piece for every player who's not in the game, and this plays up to five. So I've made myself like a little highway out of blue tokens that I will be able to use to just zoop across the board throughout the game. So I just built it right across. Hopefully I can keep my road from getting killed by sparks. We'll see. Uh, I've drawn my opening hand. We'll go over that in a second. Here's the rest of my deck. I've set up the hack shack with four cards for us to shop on our turn. And here is our boss setup. So we're gonna be playing against Alpha Moby. He's only two skull and crossbones. It goes up to five for mother. And I've drawn three objectives one copper, one silver, and one gold as based on the card. So let's just take a quick close look at Alpha Moby to get you situated. So what we know is that for his setup, which we're about to do, you place one spark on each partition on faith. Uh-oh. Also place one spark on each player's access point. Then during the start of turn step, we're gonna add one spark to my avatar's position every single time. So I can't hang out anywhere for too long, because if I do, we're gonna end up with a buildup of sparks that only goes downhill from there. So that is Alpha Moby's way of getting rid of us is he's just gonna harass us constantly across the board. We also know that during the first round, we're not gonna roll for sparks, but we will during the silver and gold rounds of the game. So I will help you keep track of what we're doing and we'll go from there. Here's the copper goal that we drew. It's not too bad. The goals have one or more viruses in at least two different partitions on each Renegade's home server. So what that means is that our first goal isn't too bad. We just need to get two viruses out and have them on the server. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so per Alpha Moby's setup instructions, let's put some sparks out. I might've made a mistake with my road. I wasn't thinking when I set it up, but eh, it'll just teach you how the game works. All right, so that's one on each partition of faith and then one on my access point with me. And we're gonna get another one very shortly. All right, so sequence of play. We are gonna start with, well, we've done the intel phase, which is where we actually look at what we're doing and think about it for two seconds. But now we are going into the command phase, and the first one is gonna be start of turn step. So at the start of turn step, I have to add a spark to the partition that my avatar is on. So now we have two viruses here, uh, two sparks here on my access point, which I do not like, not one bit. We don't need to restock the hack shack because I just stocked it. We don't have to roll for new sparks, partially because it's the first turn, partially because Alpha Moby does not do that during the first cycle of the game. So now we get to do command action. So I've already drawn my opening hand. I have Infiltrate, Memory Steal, Focus, Diversion, and Renegade Apprentice. So I didn't get any movement this turn, which is a little disconcerting, but we're gonna deal with what we have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go shopping over here in the Hack Shack and see if I can upgrade my cards, which it looks like I have some good odds of that. Because I have a, let's start with the red. 
So this is actually great because I have a one Renegade Apprentice that I can pay for this sidekick to turn it into a two. Let's do that. So this is gonna be removed from the game. This is going into my hand. So sidekick either gives me two um, infection symbols or I can execute it to delete one spark on my partition or on an adjacent partition. So it's like an instant delete card. That sounds good to me. Similarly, this infiltrate has two symbols on it. I'm gonna use it to buy emit EMP, which costs two. So I'm changing these two reds to basically a red and a purple. A purple is a wild. So this is also gonna leave my deck. This baby's coming into my hand. And it says when this card is used to initiate an infect action and you succeed, delete all sparks from one partition adjacent to yours. That's also very promising. I like it. So here are the cards that we have left. These greens are probably also gonna help me make it some good purchases here. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, Diversion's just gonna stay, I can't buy anything with that. For Focus, I'm gonna spend Focus to purchase Ginger Cool. Ooh, so it gives me a green and a wild, and I can either play it for its symbol or if I'm holding on to the card, I can use it to interrupt after any spark roll to instead change the face of one of the spark dice to whatever I desire. So I can control a little bit when I have this in my hand where the spark goes when we roll for sparks in future cycles. So I'm definitely keeping that. Then I have memory steal. So I like that this is one green, one wild. If I wanted to, I could spin this green to pick up one that's two green and I can upload extra contaminants when it's used as part of an upload action. So whenever I put a green token down, I can put another one down. Hmm. I'm gonna go, to, I'm, gonna, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and go for the upgrade. Well, yeah, let's do it. The wild is good, but I have some wilds going, so I'm not gonna freak out about it. All right, so here's our upgraded hand. Let's see what we can do with this baby. Hmm. I think I'm gonna hold this diversion card for next round since I don't have enough yellow to do anything and maybe I'll get more. So as you re might remember from, if you've watched my tutorial, you can hold one card between rounds in the first and second rounds of a cycle. So I'm gonna hang on to that one. But let's see what we can do with our reds and our greens because I want to deal with some of these sparks and maybe put another virus down. All right, so let's see what we can do with these fancy new cards of ours. So we have our greens, which I'm gonna to put to the side for now. I'm gonna put this to the side for now. Let's see what kinds of viruses we can unleash on this system. Okay, so I have a, I have a potentially interesting situation. I can use Sidekick to initiate Infect action and potentially kill both of these sparks, or I can execute it to delete one and then just try to do a separate Infect. I think, I think I wanna just go ahead and roll the dice, literally. So here's how this works again. I have myself, I'm worth two to a die roll and one virus. There are two sparks here. So I'm gonna play sidekick for another two infect points, basically. So let's put my deck over here. Let's be organized. I'm gonna discard this. So I'm gonna have a base of one, two, three, four, five, to two on this die roll. I could still lose it, especially since it's not meter beat, it's just beat, but I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so we're gonna get it four to one. So we have rolled higher, and that means that we are going to kill both of the sparks on this partition, which is really good for me because that's exactly what I needed to do. So now I have these cards left. I'm in kind of a weird situation because I'd really like to do some more uploading but I also don't wanna end up, ah, oh, this is funky. Okay. So basically I have, I can hold one card over to the next round, but like I can only do stuff with what feels like th two out of the four. It's a little bit difficult. I think though what we're gonna do, I definitely wanna use these greens. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some uplinks. So this is one, two, three, and then this wild just kind of gets spent. But because we are using Adrenaline Surge, it says when this is used as part of an upload action, you can upload one additional contaminant of that type to that partition. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Adrenaline Surge, 
with this third green off of the ginger cool to put two greens out because having um, a really nice installation that is green is really never a bad thing. It's super useful in the game and I don't want to neglect that because I'm obsessed with killing sparks right now. I just think that seems like a good idea. So these go to discard. Now I have these two. One of these is going to get discarded. The other one I'm holding for the next round. So now I have to decide what the smartest choice is going to be. All right, so as much as I love viruses right now, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to spend these to go ahead and upload a replicant. So we're going to spend one, two, three symbols to put a yellow token down as well. I don't want to get too shoehorned into one thing in this game right now. All right, so we've reached the end of the turn. There's nothing that triggers the end of the turn step, so we're going to just replenish our hand. All right, we've got some movement, some yellow, blue, sorry, that's green, and more yellow. Okay, so we have like all the yellow in the entire world in this hand. All right, well, good thing I have replicants to work with. Maybe I can make that work to my advantage in this. We'll see. So now we're going to come back around. And what that's going to mean is that we are going to have our start of turn step. So that means another lovely spark is going to come here that we're going to have to deal with. Now we're going to restock the hack shack. Come on, yellow, because I got a lot of buying power today. Okay, well, that started out nice. Replicant jar. Emit EMP. Adrenaline surge. Hopefully I can buy this emit EMP on a future turn because I really like that card. And then, ooh, a self-modifying inhibitor. It looks like I got my wish, people. So now that we are in the command step, we are definitely going to have to buy these yellows. And I think I'll be able to do it. Yellow, yellow, yellow with some blue and green. Okay, yes, this is definitely what we're going to do. We are going to spend this trickery master. So this is a yellow and the wild can count as a yellow. So it's the two yellows that I need to get a self-modifying inhibitor. So I'm bringing that into my hand. This is leaving the game entirely. Actually, I'm keeping this one. I'm going to spend this one for the two. Let's get Trixie here. And then I'm going to spend Trickery Master and Interrupt for the three that I need to get Replicant Jar. So there's always going to be 15 cards exactly in your deck. So what that means is that Interrupt is the one that I'm going to dump entirely from the game. But Trickery Master just goes in my discard, so I've kept this more useful card for later, which is perfect. So I only have four cards to work with for this turn because I had to discard one to buy this, but I feel like Replicant Jar is so good, it's worth it. So here's what I think we should do. Here we are with our self-modifying inhibitor, right? So I can either play it for a yellow and a wild, which is cool, or I can execute the action to delete one spark on my partition, and then I can add a replicant there if I so desire. That sounds really good to me. Really good indeed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play this, right? I'm going to remove the spark, and I'm going to put a yellow in its place, because that is what that action allows me to do. Then... Let's try to get clever. I am going to use Decrypt. I can't go too far, sadly, because I need to leave two viruses on my partition, like on my server, before I move out into here. I'm probably going to lose some of these roads, unfortunately, but I think that's just the reality that we're in. So I'm going to come here. What we're going to do is we're going to move these replicants, right? But then what I'm going to do is, so Replicant Jar, I'd really love to spin this to make another Replicant, but I don't think that's the smartest choice for me right now. Instead, I can execute this card to flip any number of contaminants on my server, so I can flip from yellow to red, for example, or from blue to green or green to blue, vice versa. So I'm going to play Re Replicant Jar for the execute action, and I'm going to turn... The question is, do I want to turn one or both replicants into viruses? I feel like viruses are my strong suit, but I love replicants. But I'm not going to see any for a while, because I'm pretty sure that was like all the yellow that I had in my deck. So since I don't think I'm going to see replicants again for a little bit, let's stick to our strengths. We're going to flip both of these and turn them 
into viruses, which I think is a really good idea because now we are, unless something dies, right, we're going to complete the copper objective, which was to have one or more viruses in at least two different partitions on each one of its home server. So one, two, we're making it. So in pursuit of our goal and also in pursuit of our natural strengths of our character, I think that was the best choice. And then bypass, I think I'm just going to hang on to it and see if there's anything I can do. Maybe there will be something I can like use it to buy adrenaline surge next time or something like that. Actually, I can just do that now. Yeah, let's go ahead. Since you can spin things for other things at any point in the round, the shop action is not like limited to the beginning. It's not like you can shop now. Let's go ahead and spin this green. Let's get it out and we'll put adrenaline surge in. And then I'll just hold on to this for the next round. So this one got played, played, played. These get discarded. This baby's just gonna hang out for the next round to see if anything, like a wild comes up, anything useful comes up. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So then we're gonna draw our one, two, three, four, five remaining cards. As you can see, lots of red. So I made a good choice because I can do a lot with what's out here. So now we're in the end of turn. We're going into the final round of this cycle. So we're gonna pop over the start of turn because nothing happens in the end of turn step. We do get another spark right here because Alpha Moby wants to play. And we'll play too. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so that was the start of turn step. Now we're going to re restock the hack shack. So let's see if anything cool comes up. So there's one card that's already here. So let's pull three more. Okay, sidekick. That's nice. Iteration. Also really nice. I don't think I'm going to be able to buy it, sadly. But I love these ones where you can get a whole bunch of wilds. If you can afford it, they're amazing. And then, oh, night on ship. All right, so that's blue. It's cool. We'll kind of see what we see what we've got in our hand here. All right, so let's make some purchases first. We're definitely buying a bunch of red stuff. And then I have data steel, which could be used for night on ship. Maybe we could do something with that. Cause I mean, it's better to have something that's one and an execute than it is to have one that's nothing. And then I want to keep this for the wild because yeah. And then there's nothing green to buy. So we're just going to have to live with that, I think. I could try to spin a whole bunch of stuff and get iteration, but I just don't think that that's the smartest choice I can make right now. So I'm not going to do it. All right, so first, Data Steel is leaving my deck entirely, and Night Ship is coming in. So our blues are handled and our green is handled. Let's have a look at these reds and see what the best swap out is. Okay, this is actually going to be obvious. So Renegade Apprentice leaves my deck to be replaced by Sidekick, which costs one, so I just paid one. And then Infiltrate, this has been a fortunate deal, is going to go away and we're going to get Emit EMP again. So we've actually picked up a lot of the red cards for this game, which has been a really good shopping spree. So we still have six cards in hand, but they're much better than what we started with. Much better indeed. If I really wanted to be crazy, I could probably spend a bunch of this stuff to get Iteration, but... I want to make sure that I get everything done that I need to do this turn. And I just think that buying this is going to make my life harder than it needs to be right now. So sadly, I'm going to lose this at the end of the round, but you know, it is what it is. Okay. So here I am. I think my best option is I'm going to go ahead and use sidekick, but I'm going to use it as an execute to just delete one spark on my partition or an adjacent one. So we're just going to pop this spark off. It's gone. So this card is discarded. Then let's go ahead and just move. So this one has a special action that lets you move from any open partition to any other open partition. So if I were here, I could move to any partition that's not completely surrounded by other partitions. So I can move all around the border basically and do some teleporting, which is cool. But for now, I just want to come here along my little super highway. If I wanted to, I could come all the way over here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to come here. So let's, and I'm going to take these viruses with one of these viruses with me. The other one has to stay because of its, um, because the requirement of the copper objective. Okay. So what is my best choice? This is discarded. I use that. Um, let's do, here's what we're going to do. Let's go for emit EMP. So we're going to use this as red, red. So it says when this card is used to initiate an infect action and you succeed, you delete all sparks from one partition adjacent to yours. So I can kill this and this if I'm successful, which is pretty cool. 
and might save my road, which would be particularly excellent. Also, I like cleaning up Faith because it's just a messy server. Stuff happens here all the time. And I wanna, I don't wanna deal with that. So we're gonna initiate. So this is one, two, three, four, five versus one. So the odds of me winning this are pretty high, but you still gotta roll. Okay, so three to five. So they beat me on the roll. So they're at six, but I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So even though they rolled higher than us, we still win because of the, basically the build that I was putting into the infect action before I did it. So you have to really make sure your odds are maximized when you do that. So I got rid of that spark. Also, when this card is used to initiate an infect action, you succeed, delete all sparks from one partition adjacent to yours. So this baby is also gone. That was really good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and use data scan. We're just gonna use it to move. So we're gonna come right over here. And then we are going to take another infect action. So this is going to be, oh yeah, we're gonna take this with us. Haha, <laughs> that would be smart. I should take my viruses with me when I go places. So I'm here with my one virus. So one, two, three, four, five. And then to one again. So it's the same kind of roll. And the same results, actually. So they beat us on the roll, but we beat them on the modifier. So this spark dies also, which is great because basically if we had left stuff over there, the sparks would have killed all of my little blue movement pieces and that would have really sucked. I would have lost a lot. Um, sadly, this is kind of a waste. So I have these two greens, they don't do anything. So this card is just kind of like a wasted card at the end of the turn. So we're just gonna discard it. And that was the end of the cycle. So what that means is that we're going into the countermeasure phase and that is where mother decides, well, Mother Dots, says Alpha Movie, gets to fight back against us a little bit more. So first we have what's called the virus battle segment. Nothing's actually gonna happen because you have to have a spark and a virus in the same spot. So if this spark and virus were together, that would have gotten really crazy. They would have, I would have had to roll a die and see who won, but that's not actually how it turned out. Then anything that was left of mine that's on the same partition as a spark or a guardian, so if a bunch of sparks gang up, they become a guardian, um, that would have been problematic because we would have had, this spark would have auto deleted this blue piece. So that did not happen, but it could have. So that's why it was worth going along this road to kill things. And then we're gonna go to the success or failure step. So we're gonna look at clockwork plague. That was our copper objective. We'll see if we made it. Hopefully we did. <laughs> okay, so goal, have one or more viruses and at least two different partitions on each renegades home server. So we do have one virus on each of two partitions on our red server, as we've discussed, so we do succeed. So let's flip it and see what we get. So that was what would have happened if we failed. We succeeded. So it's going to tell us, add one replicator anywhere on the network. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. So a replicator means that we can only pay one yellow and then get a whole bunch of yellows, which is really awesome. I love using replicators. Great work. Our viruses kept her occupied so we can install a mod and stay on the offense. Oh, cool. Okay. So if we'd failed, by the way, we would add one spark to each renegade's home server at every partition without a virus. That would have really sucked because I would have had to add four sparks to the port. So I'm really glad we didn't do that. Okay. So we're gonna place our replicator and then we're gonna move our sparks. So let's do, so let's go ahead and put the replicator where we can use it. Let's put it, I kinda wanna move back to my home server some. I like it over there. I wanna be, at, and let's put it along our road. So let's put it here. I think here seems good. Especially since I can already see that all of the sparks are moving down. So I wanna move my replicator kind of over here, away from any action. I mean, um, because I mean, a spark can't delete it, but if we get a guardian situation, I want time to deal with it so they'll rotate all the way around. All right, so we're actually gonna have some spark movement here for purple. So purple's gonna go down. What that means is that you go to the highest number partition with a spark, and then you move that spark down towards the next lowest one. So if there was more than one spark here, they would all move because it basically is move each spark token located in the highest number partition that contains sparks to the next lower numbered partition. So that is what we've done. Nothing else is gonna move. It just moves from highest down one. 
The idea is to help the sparks kind of collect in one place, which increases their likelihood of becoming a guardian, which is very unpleasant for us. All right, so here's what we got going on. This actually worked out really well. So goal, have the required number of installations, the square pieces, uh, on any one partition on faith. So for a solo player, we need two. So that's actually cool. We're already one in. And then palace building. So for this cycle, two contaminants can become a installation. However, two sparks can also delete installation. Normally it takes a guardian to do that, but we are gonna have a little bit of a tighter situation with that this round. Okay, cool. So we just gonna need to get another installation out and then protect the ones we have. All right, so our deck, which has been upgraded throughout, we're gonna reshuffle and we're gonna deal ourselves a new hand. All right, so here's our opening hand. It is very Christmassy, I guess. So we have red and green. Okay, and then we're gonna have our ginger cool and two adrenaline surges. So here's my question. If I use two adrenaline surges to make a green, can I automatically put three green down? Because I think that might be what I attempt to do. We're gonna just read the rules, the maximum of our benefit. Let's do it. Okay, so this is what we have, and then let's restock the hack shack and see if there's anything we want. So this iteration goes away. We get four totally new cards in the hack shack. So we got, oh, Project Consciousness. That's pretty cool. Oh, oh, we could teleport installations around. That's really cool. Yes. Okay, Overwrite Interrupts. Nah. Data Shift, which is fine. And then, oh, Exotic Software. I'd really like to buy that at some point. It's another one of those ones with like all the wilds on them, which I really like. But I don't know if that's in the cards for me this turn. Ha ha ha. Okay, so let's see. Oh yes, and we do have to roll for a new spark this time because we are now in the silver round. So we are on the new sparks step. So let's roll for a new spark, see where it lands. So if you didn't watch my tutorial, basically what that means is that we roll two dice. One has a server, one has a number. So we are coming to blue five with a spark, which is actually really close to us. We can knock it off on the way or something. Okay, so there's another spark. Okay, I don't want to let this sit too long but we're gonna have to kind of see what our cards let us do. And I, I, I like to get my objectives done first. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so now I have a decision to make. So I wanna buy one of these green cards, right? So I can either pay my ginger cool, so one green, one wild for one green, two wild, or I can pay one of my adrenaline surges, but I was kind of hoping to abuse this special rule on it to get extra greens down on the board this turn and make another installation. Like I'd like to have a neural hub. So, ah, uh, that's tough. I think we're gonna give up the ginger cool. I don't wanna give up the short term extra green right now. So the ginger cool is gonna leave my deck. Project consciousness is gonna come in because I wanna keep these reds too. And then there's no way I'm trading sabotage with one red, one wild for just this. I mean, you can in, in, interrupt. So you can interrupt after any infect action to instead add two to the radiant soul. Like basically I can use this to cheat my die rolls, which is cool. But I just really like having some wilds in my hand and I already sacrificed one of them, so I'm not gonna do that. So these are gonna just stay as they are. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna be risky. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna play sidekick and we're gonna play for the execute action. So it says you can execute it to delete one spark on my partition or an adjacent. So we can go ahead and take one of these guys out. Let's take out the one that's on faith because I don't want there would be an explosion over here that gets out of control. So that's what we're gonna do. So this goes into discard. Here's my deck. Let's put everything where it should be. Now, I'm gonna play Sabotage, but I'm gonna play this as a blue movement. So all I have to do to initiate one movement along this whole track is pay one. So let's come over here to this server. Well, this partition on the server. So that was my move. Then I'm going to play Adrenaline Surge. So what that's gonna do for me is I have one, two, three, four greens. So I'm gonna pay it, that's one, two, three, so I can put one green on. However, because these are both adrenaline surge, they both have an action that says, also, when this card is used as part of an upload action, you may upload one additional contaminant of that type to that partition. So I can add one more green for this card and one more green for that card. And then I'm gonna play this. I could do a little bit more with it, sadly, but that's fine, it'll come back around. To turn all of these three greens into an installation. And I actually overpaid for that because this run I really only needed two. 
But that was still so awesome. So now we have a nice neural hub here. So what that means is that I can stand here and then teleport to other parts of this partition as if I were there. So I can stand here and attack these viruses from where I'm standing, which is so cool. I love it. I actually want to put a neural hub everywhere I can because it's just so useful. So that was all my cards for this particular hand, but I feel like that was a well-played hand. I feel really comfortable with that. So let's replenish our hand. So we have one, ooh, yes, two, yes, three, four, five. Okay, so we got some movement, some red, some yellow. Okay, so this is all looking pretty promising, actually. I think there's a lot we can do. And then we are going to go to the start of turn step because there's nothing happens at the end of turn. So at the start of turn, we add one spark to where we're standing, but we're gonna kill it right away, as you're gonna see. Spark murder, I like it. Oh, and I'm an idiot. I meant to carry this virus with me. I always mean to carry this virus with me. We're just putting it over there. That was stupid, sorry. So now that we've done the start of turn step, we're gonna restock the hack shack. So we've already got three cards here, so we'll just put out one more. This time we got Dancing Pig. Okay, so you can swap contaminants and sparks around. That's kind of cool. Okay, so now we're going to do the new spark step. So let's hope, please, just not purple three. Anything. Okay, so we got red five. Get off my server. No. Okay, so they're hanging out on our server now. So we put a spark out and we are ready to go into the command step. So let's see if there's anything we want to buy again. I don't think I want to give up this card for that. That's not going to happen. I like having a wild. Let's go ahead and trade out Decrypt for Data Shift because it's still worth the same number of blues. So I'm overpaying a little bit, but that's fine. I also get two blues and then an Execute instead, which lets me move up to three contaminants from any adjacent partition to mine. So I can like summon my things to me, which is really cool. So let's get rid of that and buy this. I think that's a good choice. I don't really want to overwrite interrupt bad enough to give up the card that I have. And I like both of these cards a lot better than I like Dancing Pig. So this is gonna stay the way that it is. I would love to get exotic software, but again, I don't really want to spend the cards that it would take to make it so, or do I? Let's play for a little bit and then see. All right, so I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and play self-modifying inhibitor for its execute. So I'm gonna do it to delete one spark on my partition and then add a replicant there. So I'm going to get rid of this spark and I'm going to add a nice lovely yellow replicant. Much better, don't you think? I think next what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am once again going to actually check this out. This is really cool. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play replicant jar. I can only put two more replicants on this space, so I can't spend all three, unfortunately. But I'm basically going to use it to pay one yellow each on this replicant, so on this replicant partition that has this installation, so I can get two more yellows. So that's what I'm going to do, because these yellows are going to have a use for me, and because I can pull replicant dragon later, I can change that use at another time. So I have three yellows hanging out on here with me. So this is awesome. It's because I'm on the same space as this replicator, so I've just got all my replicants, I'm maxed out. I'm also here with this, um, with this neural hub. I'm going to basically teleport myself across and mess with these viruses. I mean, these sparks, I'm the virus. Actually, there's a minor problem with neural hubs, which is that I can ghost anywhere, but my tokens can't. So I'm actually going to move down here and deal with these sparks instead. So right now I'm meeting this goal. So I don't want to actually be on this partition right now. I want to let everything just kind of be because I'm going to meet this silver requirement as long as these stay safe. So I'm going to go ahead and do a data shift. And I'm going to come down here, one, two, with my three replicants. This is delightful to me because now I'm going to use this on my data scan as a wild. I'm going to say that it is a yellow and then I'm going to just turn it into another blue. So it's another thing on my network. So I can use the yellow because there are three replicants here and two sparks. I can take a spark away and replace it with the blue that is here, which is really, really exciting. 
And then I'm actually just gonna do the same move again. So I'm going to say that we're doing another replicating action, yellow, to generate the command. This spark goes away. And this time I wanna add a virus as my other thing. So basically I just came in here and wiped out these sparks with my sweet, sweet replicants. And that was very exciting. So I feel like that was a hand well played. Let's just move these over. So we're gonna replenish our hand. Let's see what's in our last set. So emit EMP, sidekick, trickery master, the night M ship, which I could actually use this time because I'm on open partition so I could just shift around somewhere if I wanted to, or in diversion. So some yellow, some red. I feel like there's a lot that I can do with this. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is we are going to skip end of turn because nothing happens then. Start of turn, Alpha Moby is gonna give us another spark to deal with, but I think we have this pretty well in hand. And then we are gonna come back around and replenish the Hack Shack. So we got another data shift. That's a pretty cool card. We'll see what I wanna do with that. And then, It's time for the new spark step. So let's roll another spark. Let's hope it's nothing too nasty. Okay, so this time we got a yellow two. And I don't think we're gonna have the time or the energy to actually go deal with that just now, but we should probably keep an eye on it in case we start rolling other yellows, because that can be bad. Okay, so now it is our turn. We are in command action step, woohoo. So do I wanna buy anything is the first question. I think we're gonna go ahead and spend diversion to pick up Dancing Pig because it's it's only cost one, but it's a two for two plus an action. So this is gonna go away. Dancing Pig is gonna come into our hand. So now we can have contaminants and sparks swap spots on our server, which is pretty cool. I still don't really want to overwrite interrupt. Um, for blue, I think I might go ahead and trade the ship for data shift. So this is gonna leave, and I'll bring this one in, because I like having a lot of movement, and I just feel like this moving contaminants towards myself is gonna be worth more to me than transporting around the edges of the board, at least at the current game state. I could regret that when we get to the gold objective, but for now, I feel like that's not really what I need the most right now. All right, so now it is to me, and let's, let's do this thing. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is I am going to I'm just gonna go ahead and play Dancing Pig. Ooh, no, I don't wanna do that. It's gotta be Trickery Master. So I'm gonna play Trickery Master. So the yellow initiates the step with my replicants, and then the purple, let's go ahead and turn this spark into a virus. I like me some viruses, and I wanna move and carry them with me and get into some fights soon. So I think that that is what we are going to do. That works for me. So we've cleared off faith, which is pretty good. We've got a couple little sparks around here to deal with. Let's go ahead and play the data ship to move. I want to move. Here, let's just go ahead and move here. I'm going to take my sparks with me. I mean, not my sparks, my viruses with me. And then I am going to, I'm going to execute the action on sidekick to delete one spark in my partition or an adjacent partition. So this is adjacent, so this spark goes away. And since there's no other apparent action to me, I'm gonna go ahead and just play one, two, three to put another replicant out in case that I want it later. So at least I've maximized what I can do with my cards. So now we're going back into the lovely, lovely countermeasures phase. So now we'd have a virus battle segment, except there are no viruses that share partitions with sparks We've done a pretty good job managing this. There is a spark up here, but it doesn't have anything to fight. It also doesn't have anything to delete, so nothing's gonna get deleted during this step either. Same thing for this buddy up here. We're coming for you. Okay, so now we are going to do the success or failure step. So let's have a look back at Hacker's Palace. All right, so what Hacker's Palace is telling us is that we needed two installations on any one partition on Faith. We have succeeded at that. There are two installations here and they are in one single partition on faith. So we have succeeded at that and we've, we've done it. So let's have a look at the success step. Okay, so now I can stack any two installations from faith onto any partition three. For the rest of the game, this is the hacker's palace. It is no longer an installation 
but it automatically deletes all sparks and guardians there. So basically we're gonna lose our installations, but they're cool. All right, so what I've done is I'm taking these installations from over here and I'm putting them on this number three. That's gonna be my hacker's palace because all these other threes were kind of far out and like, mm, I at least come here a lot. I like my access point. So I'm just gonna do that. Okay. So what that's gonna mean is that these are not installations anymore, but if I go stand here, then Alpha Mobius Star of Turnstuff doesn't do anything because it just zzz, every spark or guardian that comes in. And also there's a spark over here. I think that that seems like it might be good. All right, so here's our six, here's our movement of the sparks. There's no sparks on purple. There are no sparks on green. There is one on yellow, it's going to move up. There is one on red, it's going to move down. So now if it moved again, it would just get zapped, which is kind of cool. Okay, so that was successful. And the other good news about that is that we get a beautiful success token with bonus points. So that's another 25 VP token to add to the pile. Beautiful. So now let's come around and have a look at our gold objective. Let's see what it is. All right, so it says that I have to be on a neural hub that's not on faith during the success or failure step. Okay, so that's, that's fine. But I also, during the start of turn step, have to add one spark to faith number one every time. And if I end any move action on a server with another avatar, I have to add three, so that doesn't matter. But what this does mean is that I have to carefully budget where I'm building this and what I'm doing because I have to manage a crisis continually on faith number one or else I'm gonna end up with some guardians. So let's not have that happen, shall we? Yikes. All right, so we're gonna have to pick our best spot for our neural hub. Mm, it has to be on a server that's not faith. But like that could be anywhere. So like we could do it here. So it's close to all of our stuff and it's still adjacent to faith one. So I have those red cards that let me do stuff there. Um, we could come here, but that's a little too, I, I want like a more central spot. So maybe I'll try to build my neural hub right there. Should have built my hacker palace somewhere else, I guess. Yikes. Okay, that's okay. We got this under control, theoretically. Ha. All right, so let's go ahead and do all of our basic stuff. I am going to shuffle my deck and draw my initial five cards and see what we are working with. So one, two, all right, three, four, and five. All right, I was hoping for a little green, but that's okay, it means it's still in there. Okay, so we're also gonna clear out the hash shack. So it's another wild card that I didn't get, which is a bummer, I love those. And we'll lay out one, two, here's some green, three, and four. Ooh, hologram, that's kind of cool looking. Move, I can teleport my avatar to any partition on the network as a move action with that one. That is really cool. We might buy that just to buy it, dang. So here's the deal. Now it's time for the start of turn step. We are gonna get a spark here where we're standing. We're also gonna get one on faith number one because we have to deal with mother's revenge on the gold objective card. So we're gonna get two sparks every turn and then roll for another one. Whew, we just gotta make it through guys. All right, so the hack shack is restocked, we're fine. Now we have to roll for our third spark of the turn. So it's gonna come to green five. So we're gonna have a spark over here now. Bummer. Okay, so now the question too is what do I need to deal with versus what can I ignore? I think dealing with the stuff on faith is pretty key. And then everything else might need to take second place to that neural hub and making sure that I'm on it. So we have to hope that nothing bad happens in the next three rounds. It's probably the reality of where we're at here. I think the first question is do I want to shop? Because do I want to spin these three blues for this hologram? I mean, it is pretty real. It's a very sweet card. But... I'd have to give up some movement this turn to make it so. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We are gonna discard data shift. Let's put our deck here, our discard pile over here. So we're gonna discard data shift. We are gonna get data scan out of the game and we're gonna buy hologram because it is just too cool and I can teleport anywhere that I want and that is awesome. So before we go teleporting anywhere, however, I think what I wanna do, ooh, yeah, here's what I wanna do first. Okay, I wanna do ex emit EMP. So what that is gonna let me do 
is I'm going to use this to initiate an infect action. If I'm successful, I can delete this spark and that one, and that just seems like a good plan in my eyes. So I think that that's what I wanna do. So that puts me at one, two, three, four, five to one. My odds of winning are pretty good especially when I roll a six and they roll a one. So we totally kick those sparks butts. So this spark is gone. And then this spark is also gone because I get to also delete from a partition adjacent to mine. So that's helping me manage the spark situation here, which I appreciate. So the next thing I want to do is I think that I might want to actually use the wilds on replicant jar as a move action. Yes, it's a little bit wasteful, but I want to come here and I want to bring my viruses here because this is where I kind of want to make a stand and build a neural hub and I need to make sure I can take care of any threats that come my way while I'm in there. So now I have to decide what I'm going to save until the next round. Actually, you know what? Instead of moving from, from here, I am going to actually take one, two. I'm going to move here and I'm going to take my viruses with me. The reason I'm gonna do that is because this also is close enough to Faith where I can make my neural hub happen and still attack Faith 1 and, and manage what's going on there. But also it lets me place Sidekick so I can execute to delete one spark on my partition or an adjacent one. So it clears this spark out and keeps everything under tight control because we don't really know how things are gonna go with the roll next turn. This card I'm gonna keep because if I have to teleport somewhere for any reason, I want this in my hand. So these go in discard. I'm gonna draw five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see what I have to deal with here. Okay, Adrenaline Surge, that's great, I need that. Emit EMP, maybe used for viral stuff. Maybe I'm gonna use it to um, make a green because I need to get on that immediately. We've got to get the greens going. And then let's see, Dancing Pig. So I can swap things, that's potentially nice. Sidekick is also good because it's going to let me do some discarding. And then again, a self-modifying inhibitor. I can delete a spark to put a replicant there. All right, so now we've come to the start of turn. So we're going to put a spark where I am, which will hopefully murderate shortly. We'll put a spark here on Faith 1. It basically just needs to be kept under control. If we don't roll a spark, we can pretty much leave it alone, but I don't, I don't want to play too many games with that. And then we're going to put another spark on Yellow 5, so right next to us. So... We have to deal with this before things get too crazy because we don't want that. We really don't. But the most important thing is making sure that we're making the progress that we need to get a neural hub that we can stand on for the end of this turn. And that is no joke. So let's see what our smartest choice is going to be. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna execute this to delete one spark and add a replicant. So this spark goes away. We'll put a replicant here. So that's one spark dealt with. Next, we're going to use Sidekick, so execute to delete one spark on your partition or an adjacent one. So we are going to go ahead and Sidekick away that one. So this spark is still here, it's still here to threaten us, but it could be a lot worse. Now let's see what we can do with the rest of our stuff. Okay, so I want to hold on to this one again for a future round. So the other thing that I can definitely do is we are going to do one, two, three. This is a wild. So we are going to put out one green for the three that we paid and then a second one because we used Adrenaline Rush. So we have two out. We need to get enough green next turn to do one creation action and one installation action to make this work. I think we have it if I've been counting my cards correctly. So I think we're good, but <laughs> we'll find out. So these are all discarded. This one, I can't really do much with it. I could switch a contaminant and a and a spark, but why would I do that? That's a terrible idea, I don't want that at all. So this is just gonna get wasted, sadly. I'm keeping this, I'm just keeping it. It's too good not to keep. Okay, so that was all of our stuff for this particular turn. I think I completely forgot about the hack shack, by the way, but oh well. Um, <laughs> so I'll put a note in when I edit this. All right, so now we are moving to the end. We are gonna deal ourselves our last five cards of this round. Sabotage, Project, Project Consciousness, Data Shift, Trickery Master, Adrenaline Surge. Yes, okay, I think we're gonna pull this off. I really do. 
Okay, so the first thing that I need to do this turn, so there's a spark here, and I need to get rid of it in order to complete my installation process, because if there are sparks somewhere, you can't do any install actions. And I don't want that. I don't want that at all. So let's see if there's anything I can just auto get rid of anything. No. Okay, we're just gonna roll for it. We can just roll. Okay, so I'm gonna take a risk. So we have sabotage for one, two, three, four, five, six to one. Yeah, this, um, unless I roll, basically it could, we could tie if this thing rolled a six and I rolled a one, but the odds are really low. So let's just see. Okay, so it rolled a six and I rolled a two, but that still puts me ahead because I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to its seven. So this spark disappears closer than I would have liked, but whew, we made it. Excellent. So this goes in discard. Now I get to build. Let's go ahead and do project consciousness. So we're just going to use it for one, two, three. We're going to put a green out. No, that's not what I'm looking for. So we're going to put a green out. Then we're going to use adrenaline surge to convert those into a green installation. We've made it happen, my friends. And we're gonna try to end our turn right here. So now what we're gonna do, all right. So here's what I think I'm gonna do just for fun because we're basically on the last turn and we've succeeded at our goal. We've, we are standing on a neural hub, not on faith. And we're gonna be here during the success or failure step. So what I think I wanna do is just have a little fun. So let's, let's play Trickery Master. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this as if it's a green. What a green command action does allows you to do is allows you to shift one of your contaminants or a spark one partition away from where your avatar is standing. Now that I'm here, I can ghost over here and just see if we can kill that spark too, which is kind of fun. So what I think I'm gonna do, I didn't end up needing to teleport anywhere after all. So we are going to use the hologram for two red, 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 red. And then it's as if I'm there. So it's like two. So basically what this neural hub lets me do is it makes my avatar go and it like temporarily is here for this action. So it's as if my, my avatar is here. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five versus one. So let's just roll and see if we get it. So I think we did. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus six, seven. Yes, so we did just beat it. So this spark goes away also. And then this data shift is just going to kind of hang out. It just, it's, it's not going anywhere. Okay. So this actually worked out really cool because we've now hit our, um, our SMC revenge step. So we're going to get to see both a virus battle and at least one delete contaminant segment for the end. So you actually get to see how it all happens. So here we're going to have a virus battle. It's just one to one. So let's see if we win or not. So we tied, if you tie, we lose. So the virus dies. What that means is that we're also going to have a delete contaminant step where everybody who's in a space with a spark gets killed. So these two segments of my road also go away, which is a bummer, but it's actually okay because we've reached the end of the game. Now we're gonna go to the success or failure step. We have been successful. So what we were told to do was be standing on a neural hub that's not on faith at the end of our, during the success or failure step. So we have successfully done that. I am very happy. So that is really good. So we were successful. And, oh, by the way, just to make it clear, this if you're standing on a server with another avatar, you have to add three sparks to your partition. What it's doing is it's forcing you not to all go build one neural hub and all gang up on it because otherwise it'll destroy you. So that's what that is. But we've had success. So it says add one spark to every partition where one or more avatars are located. So that could have been a disaster, but it isn't. <laughs> um, so failure would have been to add three sparks to every partition currently occupied by one or more avatars. So you might say, why is it doing this? This is the end of the game. Sparks and guardians can build up all the way to the end. So if you do not have your situation under control, you can die on the last turn during the success or failure check because you didn't handle it. And then the sparks overwhelmed you at the bitter end. So if come on mothers at the best you've got, we may be spread out, but we're in control here. And then we'll just do the movement stuff because you should. So green goes down from five to four. Purple will go up from five to six. Uh, blue, there's nothing on blue. And then red is gonna go back up to five. 
So now that we've done that, we do get 25 points for our gold objective. So 25 points, pretty sweet. And then we're in the end of game step. So has the game ended? Yes, the game has ended. All three objectives are over. And so that's where we're at. So we were successful against Alpha Movi, and let's see just how successful we were. So we get 25, 50, 75 points. Then we get a point for every complete set of five sparks there are. So there are one, two, three, four, five sparks on the board. That means that there are 20 in the supply. So that's gonna be four points, so 79. You get one VP per installation token on the network. So I think that, that counts these two as well. So one, two, three, so that puts us at 82. Then we get plus five VPs per guardian token in the stock. So there are no guardians out. That means that there are five in the stock for another 25 points. So that puts us at 107 points, which for 100 plus VPs, we get congratulations. Your victory over the SMCs have brought you notable acclaim amongst your comrades. Mother's network is seriously crippled. Whole districts have been freed from her grasp. With leaders like you, faith in humanity will quickly be restored. You are a true freedom fighter who can proudly say, I am a renegade. So thank you so much for being a renegade with me through this playthrough. I really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy my work, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're feeling very generous, you can tip me with a coffee that's linked in the notes as well. Either way, happy gaming, and I hope I see you again.